if I jump off the chair and do a kick, they go, you can't do that. And I go, why? He goes, that's, that's Jeff Hardy's spot. I said, shit. No, I go, I'm going to break a table like, no, no, no. Elijah Burke's going to break a table like, I go, but it's my gimmick. Not here it is. All right. Okay. Joined by Sabu and Super Genie. How are you guys? We're pretty good. It's been better. As you know, uh, Super Genie had a mishap with her leg. Yeah. Super Genie, how are you? How are you feeling? Well, you know, I'm hanging in there. It's a, it's a definitely a very large change. The doctors actually don't even know what happened that uh, caused me to lose my leg. I've been to all these specialists for all these different tests, like 13 vials of blood, and they don't really know what happened. So it, it's been a shocker. You know, I've made my entire career off pro bodybuilding, pro wrestling, and then suddenly to have you know, your leg amputated above your knee has been quite the unexpected shock. Sure. We have a GoFundMe going for it also. Yeah, I'll put a link down uh, below for the GoFundMe, but uh, yeah, that, it looks like it's been getting some pretty good moment momentum. And I mean, obviously the fans care about both of you guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, it's the, the thing is the prosthetic leg, you know, besides all the procedures I had to have like five, six procedures in the hospital, a, a really good prosthetic leg. You're not just given these things like there. If you want a really good one, it's super expensive, like a right. hundred thousand dollars. If I wanted a leg that brought me to where I was, uh, say, bodybuilding wise or wrestling wise in the, in the ring, I can't just have a basic leg. You have to buy a, a, a leg that's like a hundred thousand dollars. So once I heard that, it was a, a pretty big shock. Right. So like, where did, did this just start with pain in your leg? Is that where this began? And then, the path, and then uh, after about a couple of weeks, we took her to the hospital. They said she might've had a pull Achilles. And okay. Three weeks later, she had pain in her calf again, all through that three weeks. We finally took her to the hospital and they said it was dying. Her leg was dying. Oh my God. Yeah. So like a long story short, it was seemed like he was a, uh, Seem like a pole muscle, but I have in the family, there's a lot of like vein problems, clots, artery issues, heart problems. And, um, you know, so I started to have pain in my leg about six weeks before the amputation. And I went, you know, I did what I should have done. I went to urgent care. And unfortunately, the doctor didn't check my arteries. He only checked the vein. So it wasn't a, it wasn't like a full exam. And then, you know, weeks later, I'm back in the hospital and they're telling me they're most likely going to have to amputate my leg. So it was just awful. But wow. anyway, why are we here? <laughs> well, it's good to have you guys on. And what's this shirt that you have on, Sabu? It's Judas Priest. Oh, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. I, usually have, I usually wear my RVD CBD shirt, but I don't have it on today. But if you if you order RV, RV, RVD CBD and you put the promo code Sabu, you get 10% off. All right. Well, and congratulations, Sabu, on your book. I mean, Stars, Silence, and Super Glue. People can find it on your website. Um, but this is, it's a pretty in-depth look at uh, the person that you are. What's that again? I, I'm sure you said. In -depth it's, a, it's a pretty in-depth look at the person that you are. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a little, it's a little, um, softened up here and there. Sabu actually, he'll end up doing another book that's a little more true to his character, but uh, we thought we had, uh, he thought he would go easy on the fans to start off and, and um, give them something a little less shocking. <laughs> Sabu, when I, someone, when someone- been Pretty wild, so. Yeah, you've lived a wild life, like in wrestling and outside of wrestling. Like it's, for everything that fans have seen you do in the ring, it's also mind blowing to me that you were shot in the face and survived that. Yep. Yeah, right here. Right here. Not my oh. teeth out on the side there. My gosh. And I so I my nasal cavity and a couple holes in the back of my throat. And he was actually trying to defend a friend of his, how this all happened. He was in yeah. kind of a rough part of Lansing, Michigan, where he grew up and um, was a big party one night and turned into not such a great party by the end of the night. <laughs> Wow. Did you, did you think at any point during that, Sabu, that you weren't going to make it? Oh, I, well, when I first got shot, you know, my throat was dry and all that, so I was choking on my blood. But then after I, I got my, my bearings back, I was fine. 
Hmm. When we look at everything that you've done in the ring, what's been the most painful thing that you've go gone through? Uh, the time Benoit threw me on my head. <laughs> Broke my neck. That was pretty bad. Yeah, I'd say that'd be pretty bad. The second one would be the, the scar on my arm I got when I wrestled Terry Funk. Man. Yeah, you would have thought all the barbed wire matches would have been the worst, but I guess uh, I guess landing on your head and breaking your neck is a close second to having your torso ripped open by barbed wire. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, and I, I guess with everything that you have been through, what hurts on you as you sit here right now and we have this conversation? What do you say? What hurts on you right now? Oh, your back? My, my lower back, uh, my shoulder really bad, and my neck. Oh, neck, my God. Shoulder. Yeah, his lower back is particularly bad right now. Yeah, I got spinal stenosis uh, in my lower back. When we look at the, uh, like, you're like famous, infamous for the scars on your chest and your stomach, on your torso. Did all those happen in one match? No, it happened over a course of time. You know, there wasn't one match, it was a month. Quite a few matches. Yeah, you're thinking of the wrestler movie where that guy had everything happen all at once. No, no, his injuries sp spread over over time. It's right. like over I mean, years. it's also become like it's become your trademark too, though. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think anything having to do with barbed wire, like I think people specifically think of Sabu when it comes to barbed wire. So that's kind of his. Uh, to me, that's his calling card. That is, that's his pad, patent in itself, his barbed wire. Right. Yeah, I, I think when people think of barbed wire in a wrestling ring, I think there's a lot of fans out there who think that this is not real barbed wire, but it is oh. real barbed wire. It's definitely real barbed wire. In his case, it always was, yeah. yeah it's definitely real barbed wire. So when you sign up, Sabu, for your first barbed wire match, what's going through your mind? Well, I didn't sign up for it. I, I it was like a tour of Japan, and it just so happened I had a barbed wire match. I didn't know about it until the last minute, so I, I I didn't think that much about it. And, and I took it in stride. It was just another day, and uh, I'll try hard like I do any other time, and uh, hopefully they like it. And the thing was, I tried so hard that I was good at it that they thought that I liked doing it, but I didn't like doing it. I was just doing what was faced in front of me. And was that your first exposure to like that real type of hardcore match? Yeah, the first time I've ever been in the barbed wire match. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, FMW. And then it became something that you were really known for. Was it just because well, you were first, good at the first, it? The first time I did a barbed wire match was one. And then the next tour, we did like three. Then the third tour, we did 16 barbed wire matches. So I just kept accumulating over oh, the next tour, kept adding more and more. And finally, every, every day of the tour was a barbed wire match. Oh my gosh. Yeah, fucking him. <laughs> yeah, right. And. Yeah. and and you were okay with that? Well, I bitched about it, but I still did my best. Sure. And when I, I, I would say, why am I in barbed wire every night? And they go, because you like it. I said, no, I don't. So it's just because you complained the least? Is that why? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that you like more, barbed wire or steel chairs? What's that again? Barbed wire or steel chairs? Uh, steel chairs. Yeah, steel chairs became like a huge part of your offense. Where did that begin for you? Well, my uncle always used a chair every now and then. And then FMW would say it's for killing us with chairs. So I just wanted to use a chair a different way. So I'd jump off it or throw it or kick it or whatever, you know, something different than just whacking the guy with the head with it. Yeah, when your uncle is the, the sheik and you're growing up with the uncle as your sheik or as the sheik, is it like pretty, you know, it's a pretty predetermined that you're going to become a pro wrestler at that point? Yeah, I guess so. But I'm the only one in my family. Like, uh, I had a cousin who wrestled for a couple of years. He quit. Another cousin wrestled for a couple of years. He got killed. But uh, nobody really stuck with it. I, I was the only relative that stuck with it. Huh. Did, was there a point where you weren't going to stick with it? No, never. 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 I started amateur wrestling in eighth grade. And, I, you know, and I was only doing that to gear me up for pro wrestling. So I went up to 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. That was just warm up to get me tough sort of pro wrestling. I didn't care how I did, it was just practice. And his uncle actually knew Sabu was always gonna end up being a pro wrestler because of... Because when I'd go out to his house when I was young, I'd just stare at him and he kind of was scary, but, he, but I, I wasn't scared, but I was scared, I just didn't show it. 
Huh. He just mesmerized by him, right? So somehow yeah, his right. uncle sort I, of picked up that I, this is going to be like the I, next sheet. I, I studied his mannerism. I studied everything about him. Like yeah. Book. Were you always as, as athletic as we've seen you in the ring? Like, you know, pulling off moonsaults out of nowhere. Like, it's like you really oh, were super athletic. Oh. My uncle used to be pretty athletic too when he was younger, way younger. But, and he also said, when you do that shit tonight, you got to do it every night if they like it. So uh, that's, he goes, it's a curse. And a blessing, you know, it's a curse that you got to do it every night and a blessing that people want to see you. But, uh, uh, you know, I just took it in stride. I didn't care how bad I got beat up or as long as I made it through the day, I was fine. Well, believe it or not, Sabu is actually extremely clumsy. <laughs> like if, if you're going to have a dinner table, who's going to knock over the glass of milk? It's going to be Sabu. So it's, it's amazing to me, like how smooth he is in the ring and yet. It's funny how sometimes he's clumsy in real life. Like two people would never put the two together. Yeah, you so know why I'm clumsy? Because I try to be too careful. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's true. You're holding I'm yourself to. back. And you're saying in the ring, you don't try to be too careful? No, not at all. I try to be rough and tough as I can. So if it's well, a blessing. stuff looks very real. You know, like I always thought Sabu would be a great crossover with UFC because you're never going to look at Sabu stuff and go, this stuff isn't real. Like how, how some people try to act like pro wrestling is fake. You're never going to look at Sabu stuff and say, Hey, they practice this a million times. This stuff is fake because his stuff isn't fake. He thinks on his feet and he, he's just trained like a, a pure wrestler. Most people nowadays are not trained like that at all. Well, I remember, I remember seeing Sabu for the first time in ECW and I thought this guy might legitimately be crazy. <laughs> you're probably right maybe <laughs> I, I mean it was just something about your demeanor but also just the way that you worked matches it was just like it looked like you were genuinely out there to like kick some ass well the thing that people believed was when i didn't talk because every other wrestler talks shit and does that loud promo and i didn't say nothing and i still connected with the people i didn't say a word and i connected with the people did was it was that a benefit for you to not cut promos it's a benefit to me, as long as I had a manager with me. But if I didn't have a manager, you know, I didn't, I didn't have no rebuttal. Yeah. And whose idea was it to come up with the gimmick that you have now and, you know, has made you famous your entire career? But my, my uncle did. He, he named me Sabu the Elephant Boy from Bombay, India, because his hero when he was growing up was Sabu the actor who played uh, Mowgli, Mowgli in the, the, movie, the movie Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. So he always wanted to be that that guy that, that, that Sabu in there. So he used to run around the run around his house with a towel on his head when he was a little kid. And then when he got old enough, when he had a first baby, a first son, he wanted to name it Sabu, but his wife, my aunt, wouldn't let him. So they named the dog Sabu. And I'm actually I'm actually the second Sabu. And I dropped the elephant and stuff. So how long till people figured out that you weren't actually from India and now they created, you know, it was Bombay, Michigan is where you were from. <laughs> They still thought I was, so I, I changed it to Bombay, Michigan. But the elephant boy it was considered a really tough person though, right? Well, like, an elephant boy is like a cowboy. They herd elephants. It sounds funny here, but in India, I have a lot of respect. Hmm. So an elephant heard, boy is a real badass, I'm actually, really elephant boy. in that part of the world. So it sounds funny, elephant boy, but it actually means he was incredibly tough. From that part of the world, they would understand, you right. know? Right. I mean, growing up, looking up to your uncle, looking up to the Sheik, did you assume that when you got into wrestling, you'd have a gimmick that would be kind of similar to his? He, he set me straight. My first five years, I was a regular wrestler who didn't leave the ring and only did first 10 minute matches in, in the first, you know, the first uh, match of the show. And, and, I, he, and from day one, he goes, you're not going to be like me. I said, okay. He goes, no, don't, don't give me that shit. You're not going to be like me. I said, okay. I, I didn't, not that I didn't want to. I just knew there was already him. I didn't want to copy him. So it, it just, when I had the, when I was having the old boy, I used to have a turban that was wrapped around my head, say I'm from Bombay, India. But after when everybody found out I was his nephew, he said, lose the turban and wear a headpiece like his. Hmm. Uncle is what, four inches taller than you? A couple of inches. A lot bigger, a bit bigger. Do yeah. You, do you feel like this, that you'd be able to, if you started this gimmick now in 2021, do you think that they'd let you get away with this now? No. Everything is too choreographed. And, and scripted. Now, most of my shit, especially in FMW, came on came on the fly because a good worker used to be considered how good he reacted on his feet, not how he, he could read a script. Yeah, I mean, when you look at your change to where you got to read a script, right? 
when you look at your resume and you look at everywhere that you've worked, I mean, you've worked everywhere. Where was your first big break, do you think? Japan. I, I wrestled for seven years, uh, five, five years as Terry SR and two years as Sabu. And uh, when I went to Japan, it all took off for me. So that's seven years later after I started. And you know, they, you know uh, Kevin Sullivan said recently that you missed out on a $400,000 paycheck in WCW. Is, that, is there actually fact to that? Uh, it was a little more than that, but close enough. It's like a, it was a three-year deal. He said it was a three-year deal. The downside was 400. One year, one year guaranteed, two years, maybe. Wow. So what happened here? Um, they offered me some money. Uh, I went down to have a meeting with JJ Dillon and Kevin Sullivan. They offered me a huge contract and I was shitting my pants. So I said, let me take this back to my hotel and read it. And Kevin goes, read it, just sign it. I said, I have to read them. But really I wanted to tell my mother before I signed it just for the hell of it. But when I called my mother, she had a heart attack on the phone before I could tell her. So I hung up the phone and flew right home. And then I was in intensive care from, with my mother. And I called him from the ICU unit and uh, called Kevin Sullivan and said, okay, I got that contract. I'm going to fax it over to you now. He goes, too late. Rest of me sued. Matter of six hours, my contract, I got lost the contract in six hours. Yeah, unbelievable. I, that's, I, I can't even believe that that's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. Why, why yeah. would they take the contract Paul, away Paul, so Paul, quickly? Well, all it was with Polly calling up the WCW office and threatening to sue. That's all it took for them to get away, to drop me. Wow. Yeah. So then yeah. where did you end up going from there? I went to Japan, everywhere else, you know, everywhere. And then eventually WWE, you know. Yeah. Do you, I just went everywhere else. Do you think that you, do you think that the character that you had would have worked in WCW? Would you have been this massive star that Kevin Sullivan's talking about? I hope so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think so too. Well, see, Kevin liked my gimmick. He was going to he was going to give me a guy that could talk for me, and you know, even a guy of my choice, a manager of my choice, and a few other luxuries. And uh, I, I was freaked out so bad, I, I had to tell my mother first, and I, it was a mistake. Yeah. Who? Well, the bad news is the heart attack. Not well, yeah, that was worse than losing the contract with my mother's heart attack. But that gave her 10, 10 more years of life after that. Wow. Who do you think your manager would have been in WCW? I wanted Tommy Rich. What it might have been Fonzie, but I wanted Tommy Rich because we're two opposite, so opposite. So that's you know that's the WCW contract situation. Now what happened with the WWF contract a few years before that? Uh, that was only a one year deal, and there wasn't much money. And they said they were going to keep Sabu the way he is, the way he was in the ECW. But when I got there, they they took Paul on the booking. After a couple of months, they took Paul, out of, Paul Heyman out of the booking, and I had no one else in the booking meeting that had my back. So one day I said to Dusty Rhodes, I go, why, is there, why am I getting the shit kicked out of me, you know, in the ring? He goes, you don't have no friends in the booking meeting. I said, what? And I looked at him as if he's one of my friends. And he goes, like I said, you have no friends in the booking meeting, and walked away. <laughs> that is pretty harsh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty harsh. So if you don't have somebody, you got to kiss somebody's ass, an agent's ass, for them to bring your name up in the booking meeting. They go, we need somebody to do this. They go, hey, how about somebody I know, you know, but uh, yeah. there's nothing to do that. They just throw you to the wayside. Yeah. Would you no say that how, was a, how good you are. was that a similar situation to when you worked in WWE later on? Just, you know, no friends in the booking room to help you out? First time. The first time I worked, worked for WWE, the tryout. Okay. That I just came in for a couple of days and that was a tryout. I didn't, I didn't want to take it. Then later on when they called me to do the ECW WWE, that's when they said, we're going to keep Sabu the same and all this stuff. And then after I got there, it slowly changed. And then once Paul was out of it, it all changed. Yeah. What would you say was the biggest difference between Sabu and ECW and then Sabu and WWE's version of ECW? Uh, they said they wanted the WWE version, but when I got there, I mean, the, the ECW version, when I got there, did they want to make it a new version? So soften me down. I already toned myself down and they were toning me down more. Every match they were toning me down. Hmm. In, in what ways do you feel like they really toned you down the most? Well, they'll say... Uh, if I jump off the chair and do a kick, they go, you can't do that. And I go, why? He goes, that's, that's Jeff Hardy's spot. I said, shit. And I go, I'm going to break a table leg. No, no, no. Elijah Burke's going to break a table leg. I go, but it's my gimmick. Not here it is. That's what they said. Is it anything I said I invented? They said, you didn't invent it here. Yeah. And I mean, you weren't able to use the chairs as much as a weapon like you were able to in ECW. The first, the first couple of months, first few weeks, I yeah. did use that like I always did. And they slowly took it everything away. Yeah. 
we, we would do NCW, WWE, uh, hardcore or uh, extreme matches on the road, and there would be no extreme matches. We, we wouldn't even break the table or use a chair. Mm. Oh, sure, we wouldn't. What would you say was like uh, the standout moment for you in your time in ECW? Uh, that time Taz uh, chased me for a year, then I ended up in the ring with lights out, lights on, facing him. I guess that was the biggest moment. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. What about an impact? What do you think is the biggest thing you did in TNA? Uh, I did a barbed wire match in TNA called Barbed Wire Massacre in 2004. That was pretty good. That was, that, was, that was with Abyss, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I also think that for a lot of people, what stands out in your time in WWE is your match with John Cena. What was it like working with John? I liked it. Yeah, I got a lot of bad rep, a lot of bad information given to me about him. And it was all lies and jealousy because he could work. He was a nice guy, wasn't selfish, and even called my spots when I forgot him. Really? Yeah. So the match that we saw was John Cena calling most of that, that, that match? He didn't call most of the match. Whenever I got lost, he called it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We both, we both called the match in the dressing room. And then when we go out there, we both called it in the ring. But I go, oh, I forgot. He goes, I know. So do this, do that. You know, he, he, was, he was always on the right page. You're obviously he's, in the conversation. A lot of guys are jealous of him because of his big push, but I, I, he deserves it. Yeah. But what, what do you make of what John Cena is doing with his career now? I don't know. What's he doing? He's a movie star now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess good for him. <laughs> and guy co commercials. Guy he doesn't wrestle anymore. He doesn't wrestle uh, anymore. I mean, he hasn't wrestled in like, two, well, he, I guess he kind of did something at WrestleMania last year, but it was pre-taped. He hasn't wrestled since then, though. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so he's basically just following the Rock's footsteps now. Yeah. Huge. You're obviously in the conversation, Sabu, for someone who should be in the Hall of Fame. If WWE wanted to induct you in the Hall of Fame, would that be something you're interested in? I said that I wouldn't be because I think it's a, the fakest Hall of Fame there is, but I would do it for the payoff. I, I'd make sure everybody knows that I don't think I'm, I'm a Hall of Famer because they say it. Uh, I'm supposed to be getting inducted into the Iowa Hall of Fame this year. That to me is a real Hall of Fame because they put amateur wrestlers, they put you know, uh, pro wrestlers, or even boxers sometimes. But uh, it's all about wrestling, not about who sang the national anthem or who, who, what celebrity was on the show. Yeah. And I mean, it, it makes sense. You're obviously a Hall of Famer. It, doesn't it make sense that you go in there? Uh, not with, no, because I wasn't a big name in WD, WWE. Th those are forgotten. Like, Van Dam will be in there for sure because he worked more for WWE than I did. But when I was there, I didn't have no Hall of Fame year or Hall of Fame match when I was there. It was pretty, pretty sad. Yeah, I guess it is kind of. It's just sad what happened. I was such a huge ECW fan. It's just sad what happened to ECW. Well, me and Rob, well, Rob said to Vince, you know, we're losing our fans. And he goes, fuck those fans. We're going to make new ones. I said, but the new ones are too soft. You know, mm. we want the old base, you know, the, the original ECW base. Why not? They were bloodthirsty fans. We bought, bought every show, no matter how bad it was. In a perfect world, what do you think should have happened with ECW when it was going under? I, I don't know. Uh, I jumped ship before it went under, but then that ship fell, uh, fell through when I did it. So I didn't go back, but I don't know what they should have done. A better backer or a bigger backer or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, Paul, Paul's a genius. He still is a genius. That's why he's on top of the world today. And he had more stuff back then. He doesn't have the money. Yeah. What, what do you think is the most impressive thing about Paul Heyman? His brain. He, his, his, the way he talks. Uh, he's a lawyer without going to school. And he's the smartest son of a bitch I ever met without going to school. He, he, he uh, one time Vince said, cut a promo for 10 minutes. He goes, what do you want me to say? He goes, think of something. So he went out there and thanked God for, for Vince McMahon. And, and all on the fly, all last second shit coming out of his mouth. And, and wow. he's just oh, I'm the verbal, verbal shit. Is there a lesson that Paul Heyman taught you from your time that you spent with him that you know has really stuck with you? Yeah, he said, don't ever talk on a promo. So that's not me. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew I was no good at it. Even if I tried, I'd be no good at it. I purposely not tried for Vince and Stephanie. What about from Vince? You worked with Vince for a while. What was, what's the biggest takeaway from working with Vince McMahon? He was, he was always great to my face from what I know. I mean, he's always very polite, very respectful. Always spoke good about my uncle. My uncle never spoke good about him, but he always spoke good about my uncle and, uh, and said that I was better than he thought I was, better than they said. Uh oh, hold on. 
You're getting a phone call. No, I, my battery's dying. Okay. Sorry. But uh, I should have a few more minutes left. Uh, uh, Vince was uh, amazing. He watches every single match and cares about it. He even goes over every single match and cares mm. about it. I would say, have someone else handle it. I don't feel like doing it, but he always feels like doing it. He, wow. he's, a, he's, a, he, he's a weirdo, but he's amazing. Amazing. Mm. What do you think Vince could have done to make the WWE version of ECW work better? Keep the WWE guys out of it and let us do our own thing. But get, make Paul the boss and let us do our own thing. Yeah. Ignore Just... WWE. We should have ignored them. Oops, sorry. How many of those guys are you still in touch with? How many of the original ECW guys? Not, not that many. Uh, I, I talk to Dreamer sometimes, Van Damme all the time. Taz a little bit. I talked to Paul Heyman a few weeks ago. Oh, how's Paul Heyman doing? He's doing great. <laughs> Not better than me. Mm -hmm. are, are you Are you doing okay? I, I could be better, but I'm all right. Oh, I ate my meals. You guys both look great. What's that? You guys both look great. Well, thank you. Where are you guys? We just had a doctor's appointment this morning. We have doctor's appointments almost every day, and, and then mm. today we have two. No, yesterday we have two. Wow. Where are you guys living right now? Yeah, specialist oh. has. What's that? Which uh, city are you guys in now? Las Vegas. Oh, okay. No, that's why you see Van Damme all the time. Well, yeah. I was here before him, though. We moved here right before he did. Ah. Well, again, I'll put that link down below for the GoFundMe for Eugenie. And, you know, it, it, but it's great Thanks. to see you guys doing so well. Yeah, we're, without considering, yes, we are doing well, considering what happened to her. Yeah. It's Sabu, you got a new action figure coming out produced by Zombie Sailor. Can you tell us a bit about that? Zombie got a new action figure coming out, you know, plus my book. And uh, I have a coloring book. I think I have one. Right That's here, this is my sweet. coloring book. Can you see it? Sabu and versus the three little pigs. Yeah. It's actually a, co a real coloring book. <laughs> oh, Somebody said, great read. I can read it's a coloring book. It's got a little camel genie on the back. <laughs> with like Did roped you? in piggies. It's really cute. It's, 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 it's a really cute, um, cute little story. We're going to start marketing. I'm actually probably going to start selling them tonight. His website is ecwsabu.com. And uh, what your Twitter is at the real Sabu ECW. Uh, Instagram is the same. Uh, no, just the real Sabu ECW. Yes. Yeah. The real Sabu ECW. And I sell a lot of his merchandise through mine. So mine would be like at real super genie, that sort of thing. I usually put yeah, over his if merchandise. If anybody wants my merch, uh, they'd have to get a hold of her anyways. Okay. What's the best way that people can support you? What's that? What's the best way that people can support you? Best way, best way to support you. Best way to support me? Send me your money. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no big, you, you, uh, cheer for me when you see me, I guess. I don't know. You don't have to do nothing. <laughs> Are you, you're yeah. still working matches, right? It's coming up. He's got some other business deals coming up. He's going to be doing a Patreon. You know, we got a lot of things uh, planned for him. We just had to get a little more caught up to date with social media. You know, Sabu is a yeah. little uh, I'm behind on that. Yeah. I, I underestimated, underestimated the reach of Twitter. I underestimated it. I didn't think it would, that many people paid attention to what I said, what they do. Well, you know how today everybody's got to be politically correct or everybody's going to jump down your throat. So, you know, it's a very different world nowadays. Like, uh, you know, wrestling originally started with everybody being politically incorrect and that's how it, how it functioned. And now, like, Just you can't be now. politically incorrect. You get in big trouble if you, if you pull any of the kind of storylines that they used to do back in the day. You can't do that anymore. You know, everybody flips out. Yeah. So you're still working matches, right, Sabu? Uh, no. I wrestled in October, and I was in so much pain. Uh, I had another match coming up in January. I had to cancel it, and I had some matches coming up this month I had to cancel. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wrestle again, actually, until I get surgery on my back. Wow. But So after surgery, you think you'll be able to wrestle then, or do you not want to wrestle anymore? Yeah. I, I, that's what I plan to. All right. So in a perfect world, who's your final match against? Rob Van Dam. No, no, I'm sorry. That'd be my Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. And Paul, Paul, when I said I want to wrestle Brock, he, he knew I was going to say that. Because I said, I have Paul, I want to wrestle. I told him I want to wrestle Brock. He goes, but Brock's not under, under contract. And he goes, but I knew you'd say that. I go, why? He goes, because you're a perfect opponent. He's my opponent. When I described Paul to get me somebody to wrestle,
Listen. Get my Venus final match too. <laughs> Brock is uh, Brock's pretty much an animal, so. Yeah. If you, when you look back at your entire career, Sabu, is there something that maybe you wish you hadn't done or maybe you wish you had done differently? I wish I would have signed that contract when Kevin Sullivan gave it to me. That I regret my, my heart. Do you think about how, I mean, would, would your career have really been that much different if you'd signed it, you think? My life would have been a lot better. Yeah. You know, yeah, I get it. A couple million dollars would go a long ways with me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's still possible now. Yeah, not really. I'm, I'm too old. No, he's got so many fans. Like, young kids are still his fans. It's amazing. Like, you know, with the internet and YouTube, like, he's got little girls that want to be like him. And, you know, some of them want to be like me, but a bunch of them are going to point out because they want to be like Sabu. So it's, you know, the internet is so far reaching, you know, he, he doesn't even realize how popular he I, still is. Well, I, I kind of put uh, Twitter and everything on, on the back burner thinking it was something secondary, but I didn't realize how, how, how strong it is. What was the realization that made you realize, all right, I got to really dive into this? Right. What made me? Well, everybody around me said, you got to get on Twitter, you got to get on Facebook. And finally, I, I got on Twitter and Facebook about seven years ago, but uh, not before that. But uh, I, I just got a, you know, like I, I had a Twitter for five or six years that's never used it. And when I did use it, I swore and said the, uh, a few things what I shouldn't have said and they got me uh, suspended. Now, now I'm definitely, definitely suspended off Twitter. But, but <laughs> oh, I had no. a, a new one, uh, the real Sabu ECW. Well, it's a lesson learned the hard way. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. All right, so again, it's ecwsabu.com, right? Yes. All right. Thank you guys so much. Such a pleasure to be talking to you guys. Thank you. Thank you and well. order your RVD, CBD, uh, promo code SABU. There it is. I love it.